with your hot and techy breath up the city bird SUV. Well, Fridays are about the box office, aren't they? In our part of the world, this is a box office clash in the IPL. Get your popcorn ready, keep your drink handy. RCB take on KKR yet again for the first time in this year's edition with plenty of storylines to play. And we build up to uh, match number 10 on Malti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Rick Info Timeout. Tom Moody is here. Mitch McClanagan is here. What a fixture to hand a debut on our couch to for Varun Aaron. Give him a warm welcome, boys. Come on. <laughs> I think it's wonderful to see him. Wonderful to see him. We've got, look at him and we've got a formidable him. pace attack here. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've got the right arm speedster and we've got the left arm speedster. What about yourself? <laughs> speed speed and, and myself don't go hand in hand. And the little medium pacer. I think, I think I have more fast bowling resources than my talking couch about, here. We're not talking about you. No, no. <laughs> Quiet, Tom. <laughs> then you've spoiled my joke now. Let me start again. Okay. 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 I Cut. think... Let's start again. I think I have more fast bowling resources here than a number of RCB captains over the years. <laughs> but Very that good. joke now doesn't have the same charm because of you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. I think we're yeah. all expecting something a little bit funnier. You know, the thing about this <laughs> is that this was all staged, the, these first three or four minutes, we're trying to bring in rivalry. Sometimes rivalries aren't exactly what uh, people outside make of it, but for these two teams, my God, and for some individuals within these two teams, this is the game that they live in uh, and play to win. So, RCBV KKR, which kick-started the IPL in 2008, which has now seen very recent history of plenty of incident, and with the return of Gautam Gambhir to his former franchise as mentor and... Virat Kohli still very much uh, the king of the RCB clan. We will discuss what this rivalry stands at today. And Varun Aaron knows this better. He spent some time in both dugouts. I'm sure this was as dramatic as we we can almost sense it is with social media today. Tell me what that's like. The I mean, see, the rivalry was a rivalry when Gambhir was actually playing, you know. Yeah. Because then, uh, like, you could give each other a little stick on the ground. Uh, and, like, Gambhir could actually get involved in the action. But, uh, I mean, it's still a rivalry. Uh, dugouts are pretty close by in Chinnaswamy Stadium. They're going to pass each other. Uh, all that's going to be there. But, uh, I mean, Virat Kohli is one of those guys who needs a little needle. So, uh, Gambi should be mindful because if there is a bit of tussle before Virat bats, that's mm. just going to set him on fire and he's going to play even better than he always plays. Uh, so, with some, it's really important to identify what makes certain players tick. Yeah. And Virat's one of those guys who you don't want to agitate who you want him to not get into a zone. Like, you don't want him to get into a zone. If he gets into the zone, well and good. Mm. But you shouldn't be the victim to get him into a zone. Mm. Yeah, I find that really interesting because there are players around the world that are like that, that you, do, you don't want to poke the bear. Yeah. And if anything, I just wonder whether KKR have thought through this over the last 24 hours leading into this contest and, and sort of made the point to a few of the players that let's just ignore Virat Kohli. Yep. Let's just get on with business. This don't give him the time of day. After the game, yep, let's have a chat, catch up, have your selfie, do, do what you need to do, but don't poke the bear because he's just starting to look like he's found the middle of the bat and he's got runs on the board, so look out. I'm just getting flashes in my head of Hashit Rana blowing kisses oh, in the yeah. first game. He's, oh, yeah. he's the yeah. man that you're probably trying to get around and say, hey, mate. Just call it today. You oh, don't yeah. want to fire the big fella up. Harshit Rana plays for Delhi. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If Harshit Rana wants to continue playing for Delhi, he's not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, then, but then you've got Gounce in, it, in his ear going, GG in his ear, he's going, hey, yeah. mate, yeah. you're stuck in your fiery, get in his face. Yeah. The expression that you are advising all of them to have is that of Sunil Narayan's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Run through the yeah. whole game. Just, just poker, face. poker face. Doesn't matter what's happening. But the problem is in today's times, it's not just within your playing resources and now, well, let's add the coaching staff to it that control how much needle this fixture gets. There are people involved with social media and these two franchises, they like to have a stab at each other in the digital world. This is going way back to 2017. Play Bold, uh, this was tweeted uh, by KKR. And of course, Play Bold is the RCB way. They just tweaked that a little and this was with reference to the game that uh, KKR blew RCB away. I think, if you recall that fixture. I think Sonal Narayan bowled mm. uh, Virat Kohli in that game mm. as well. So <laughs> that's probably where that comes yeah. from. And he's got, uh, Narayan's got a very good record 
against Virat Kohli. Yeah, Milan like, has a good record versus everybody. Yeah, yeah true. No, not just yeah. Virat Kohli. Yeah. Fort, no, 49 all out. <laughs> that was the 49 all out game. You remember that 49 all out yeah, game? Yeah, yeah. So we get these games that also fit the bill for the rivalry. But then RCB waited their turn to respond. And let's just see what else we found now. Uh, yes, there we go. This goes to 2020 where they said the South remembers and this is when RCB had the better of KKR who were 84 for 8 in the 2020 edition and there was a lovely Game of Thrones reference there as well but they waited. They waited three years and they hit back. Well, I find all this stuff really interesting. You know, obviously it's a different department that manages all this and mm. sometimes from a coaching perspective you just want to rein these people in a little bit. At the end of the day, it's runs and wickets and wins and losses that are really your measures. And at the moment, going into this contest, KKR rolled over RCB twice last year. Yeah. So they've got the upper hand. They're, th they're throwing the punches going into this contest tonight. Have you, any of you, ever had the chance, either yourselves or through your teammates, to have a word with the social media team if, they feel like, if you feel like what they're doing is counterproductive yeah, 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 to your planning? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, I, I've, I've requested a couple of things to be removed before. Um, just because it's not the, uh, I, I suppose, image. I don't want this team that I was uh, part of to be be represented by. You know, I just think that uh, there's a certain there's a certain line that you want to draw. Yep. Um, but you want to have fun as well. You don't want to be, the, you know, the fun police. But you, there are certain things that you, you want to sort of withdraw. I see. Okay, let's see what they've been up to today, right? For today's fixture and see if Tom Moody approves of it had he been head coach for either of these franchises. Well-rested, recharged and ready to reign tonight with the night like the Night Riders. This is Royal Challenge presents RCB Shop. Anyway, okay, so they've got to tonight. That's fine. That gets yeah, the tick. Yeah. It's green. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Nothing else happening right now. But when you want to really add a little bit of spice, oh, there's Martin Scorsese's This Is Cinema. So they're up for it. So I think both both have had uh, some clean humor here. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, the social fun. media guys have a job. They have to do it. <laughs> they have to like show their bosses, listen, we're creating enough buzz. Yeah. All this comes from there, I guess. You know, now there's going to be a time where the social media guys will give everyone job. Like we, they will be the strongest people in the world, and then well, it's we'll working. Be at their mercy. It's working because <laughs> we're talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. there you go. I'll tell you one man who can just ignore all of this and just say whatever he wants, and that is Gautam Gambhir, a former pundit on this panel, now back to uh, the dugout of uh, the KKR, and let's just roll back the clock and hear from Gautam. One team which I wanted to beat every time and probably even in my dreams was RCB. Why? Wanted to. Probably, again, probably the second most high profile team and flamboyant team with the owner and probably uh, with the squad, Chris Gale, Virat Kohli, AB De Villiers. Honestly, not won anything, still thought that they won everything and uh, that kind of an attitude and uh, can't take that. And probably the three best wins that KKR has ever had was against RCB the first time, the first game of the IPL, Brendan McCullum against R RCB. 49 all out, RCB, 6 overs 100, uh, probably the only time in IPL where in the first 6 overs 100 was scored, Chris Lynn and Sunil Iran. And we always knew that they're a very strong side and probably the probably uh, the most aggressive batting unit as well. Chris Gale, Virat Kohli, AB Devil is what can get better than that. If one thing I want out of my IPL career or even one thing I would love to have is again go on, on the cricket field and beat RCB. This is obviously a while back, <laughs> but you know the standard line from that clip. Yeah. One nothing, but I think they've won everything. And then he gets, <laughs> went on to continue to list off all the, the best games. And Gannon yeah, Gambia keeps receipts, doesn't he? Yeah. He loves it. Uh, oh, I can kind of get behind that. Uh, RCB was probably one of the teams that me personally, I, I really enjoyed firing up against mm. because there is the show, there is the glitz, there is the glamour. They're supposed to be one of the best teams in the competition and and like gg says they, they haven't won anything and they carry on like they have and i guess that's why it's easy to get up and and want to play and want to beat rcb mm, okay well there is there is something about rcb it doesn't matter that they've not had the success in the ipl their fan base uh, of course the players that play for them and you've seen what uh, gotham gambir made of it let's see if he still has those emotions gg had quite the emotionally charged day when he was in the lucknow dugout last year. But let's give you some news from the Chinnaswamy. Uh, the Knight Riders have won the toss and they will bowl first. So RCB batting first. 
significant, especially the Chinnaswamy quick reaction. Absolutely. Well, looking at last uh, last game's wicket, there was a lot in it to start with. Uh, four of the of the first five wickets came because there was some extra bounce. Uh, so I think uh, the Knight Riders want to exploit that, um, and with their with their lineup, it was it was even turning a little bit. Some of the balls, um, the spinners bowled actually gripped a little bit, and it was seeming. So uh, nothing better than take advantage of whatever Chinnaswamy is going to give you. Mm, okay, there are some interesting changes as we hear from the captain. Shreyas Iyer has said that Anukul Roy comes in. A little while back, we saw Ankrish Raghuvanshi the young Mumbai batter to actually receive his KKR cap. But in the world of impact subs and batting first 11s and bowling first 11s, we'll just wait to see what that looks like. The big uh, talking point now, which we'll get to witness in the first innings itself, is the epic clash of Stark versus Kohli. And Steve Smith knows quite a thing about it. We caught up with him before this game. I quite like the matchup for Virat. Um, the ability to swing the ball back down the line as a lefty. Uh, We've seen him get out on a few occasions for, you know, Shaheen Afridi, I think, has got in. Yeah. Uh, Trent Bolt. Had Trent Bolt. Well. Muhammad Amir in some time ago in the <laughs> Champions Trophy. It was a long time ago, I know. But, you know, he's still just looking at that kind of matchup, I suppose. And uh, in the game, in the first game against, uh, sorry, Kings Eleven, mm. he had an opportunity off, uh, off Sam Curran. Correct. That Nick got dropped at slip. Um, so, yeah, I quite like the left-handed matchup. So, Starkey's going to try and swing the ball back down the line early on, I'd imagine, and then use a wobble seam to go across him and potentially try and nick him off like Sam did the other night um, when he got dropped. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a good game. And, uh, and I'm aware that Virat would know how he's trying to attack him as well. So, mm. whether he tries to potentially come down the track, um, just take the swing out of play a little bit potentially, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how he counters it. Very good. Hearing from Steve Smith, who knows a thing or two about how Mitchell Stark likes to prep against these sorts of matchups. First time we'll see this in the IPL, Mitch. And he mentions the wobble scene, which mm. we've seen quite a bit of now from Mitch Stark recently. Yeah, probably two things to really unpack there. I think the way uh, Virat Kohli is going to try and negate that swing that Stark traditionally has. Um, we saw the other night um, at Bengaluru that he actually came down the wicket Quite often, he was meeting the ball a long way outside the popping crease, trying to make sure he got it before it moved too much. Um, did that off Sam Curran and um, Ashdeep as well. Yeah. I, I Watching Mitchell Stark over the last couple of series for Australia um, and the first couple of games here, he hasn't been bowling his in-swinger to the right-handers straight away. He's quite often bowled that three-quarter ball uh, across the right-hander expecting the right-handers to expect that he's going to bring it back in. And he's actually troubled the outside edge a lot more than I've seen him trouble the outside edge in T20 cricket. And I think it's been a tactical change for Mitchell Stark to actually say, well, this is what they're expecting, the in-swinger. I'm going to go away, away, away. And when they've got used to the wobble, I'm going to bring it back in. So I'm expecting that to Virat Kohli tonight. I don't think he'll bring one back in maybe till the third or fourth ball. I'll tell you what I'm expecting. I'm expecting a sniff first ball. As in, right up in here. Because mm. um, just listening to Steve Smith there and just thinking about the, the armoury that Mitchell Stark's got. You know, he's, he's high pace. Yes. So he may well go upstairs early. So mm. he's making it clear to Virat Kohli, any time, any time you want to come down, I'm mm. still going to have this as an option. I'm letting you know early. So it keeps him in the crease and then oh get God. back to business as usual. Yeah. So, as usual. So maybe first up, a real good short ball, like surprise, it. and then get back to what you're saying, across with that three-quarter seam and maybe get that one to bend back. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think that's a good option, going upstairs first. Uh, but the other thing with, with, with Stark is sometimes people think he's, he's actually bowling them out, but he actually loses his in-swing in phases. That happens with a lot of lefties. I'm sure uh, even Mitch would experience that. Sometimes... You, you have phases where you're trying to get it back in, but it's just going straight, mm. uh, which might actually work for Mitchell Stark because uh, when, when you're bowling anything into Virat Kohli, you have to make sure it's ending up on off stump. Yep. If it's anywhere on middle or like middle leg, he's going to put you away. Yep. So, yes, yeah, go upstairs first, get the ball angling away from a good line and he might be in business. Yeah, 
does that sometimes just happen because the ball doesn't swing anymore as much? No, it's just a lefty thing. I lefty mean, it, thing. it happens to, to, to righty fast bowlers as well because yeah. when we're trying to get it back to a, 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 a lefty at pace, if everything is not working well, it just goes straight. Hmm. It just so, goes it's also the, the white kookaburra ball. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't, there's a very, very short window where it does swing. In a, in, you know, that depends from season to season. And having worked with Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, who's probably one of the best swing bowlers the game's seen over the last 10 years, uh, you know, he has really noticed the change over recent years, oh, how the kookaburra yeah. has not swung as much Correct. as it has done in the previous, say, five years. Yeah, the, 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 sorry. Yeah, no, I, you're right. I think the balls are far more inconsistent when you're going through trying to pick a ball and, and get a ball that's balanced with a good seam, mm. which you need to break the air for it to swing as a new ball. It's like a rudder, right? Now, a lot of the seams now aren't as pronounced. Yeah, and flat. also, when you're throwing the ball up, it's wobbling itself. It's not staying on the same axis. So out of a batch of 12 balls, you'll mm. probably have one or two good ones in there. So you don't have the option of did getting one, which is going to be... Did you pick the balls? I did. Did you yeah. pick the balls? Yes. Okay, so both that's yeah. We've got two ball pickers here. <laughs> that's rare. <laughs> you can't say that. I'm Why not? Two ball pickers. Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. But that's got, it's, got, it's, a, it's a job of responsibility, isn't it? Because, yeah. you know, you, you're you know, obviously yeah. taking the onus to get the ball that yeah. you feel is going to have an impact in those first yeah. two or three overs. Yeah, the, the Kukubara ball seam used to be really pronounced and really hard. But now, like you said, it's a lot flatter. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Very good. Get good insight then. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Make, get a, make a call or two. You're a connected man in Australia. Get the Kukubara guys to fix the damn ball. Somebody. Well, I, 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 what I think it is, they've gone um, from more machine-made balls than the top-line balls were all handmade, mm. and now they're all machine-made. So that's my theory. It's always the machine. Always. Let's confirm the teams, shall we? Uh, and confirmation will come our way about what KKR are likely to do. Firstly, Bangalore, straightforward, unchanged. We will get to witness a little later in the day. Yash Dayal with a good game at home against Punjab Kings and potentially have the matchup that uh, well, we just were blown away by last year. Unfortunately, Yash Dayal was at the receiving end of the five sixes, but uh, Rinku Singh and him will meet in the IPL in slightly different colours this year. That's Bangalore, unchanged, batting first. Uh, KKR have put them in. Let's have a look at the Knight Riders, no surprises with Bangalore after the win. So Anukul Roy is the one change there. I can still mm -hmm. see Ramandeep in that team. Same four over there. So no, there's no Suya Sharma. Mm. Let's confirm that. This is a Chinnaswamy, of course. He's in the impact. He is, but yep. this is their bowling first yep. team. So it's unlikely we'll see Suya Sharma today. Mm. And given Ankarish Raghavanshi has been given his cap, we expect him to be the impact sir. Maybe that's a reveal. Barun? So Anukul Roy and me, we've played, I mean, he's... Um, when I, I, we play for the same first class team, uh, he came in as a as as a kid maybe five six years ago. He's really really evolved his game. He's a really good really yeah. good all rounder. Mm. Uh, I think he gives you a lot more than uh, Surya Sharma uh, with the bat and with the ball. Uh, I'm not I'm not taking anything away from him. Mm. Uh, he's a really good bowler. But Anukul's a gun fielder, gun batsman. He can literally close your innings off. Very um, Rinku Singh. Like a kind of kind of Ringo Singh kind of batsman, yeah. very strong leg side, powerful guy, and bowls some really good fast uh, left arm spin as well. Well, I think his inclusions to do with the matchup against yes. RCB. Oh, you know, yeah. you know, you got Faf and you got Virat just to start with. Mm. Uh, you know, the numbers with left arm spin are very much in favour. Absolutely. Uh, so I think it's a good tactical move. And we could see him bowl quite early, even into the power play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you're also, I guess, looking at over here is some, many times with the impacts, we don't even need four overs. And at the Chinnaswamy, we're expecting them to have more batting depth needed or whether that is something they look to go to. But whether that Ankrish Raghavanshi cap given is actually set in stone. I remember last year, Tom, there were times when caps were given, but we didn't see the player. Team changed their mind on the impact. Well, it's a good idea at the time. And that's that's the challenge with mm. these new rules, with the impact, because mm. that's happened a few times, as you, as you quite rightly say. Yeah. Um, because suddenly the game sort of shifts in a different direction. Mm. It's turning more or it's, you know, your, your batters have batted extremely well, so you're, you're looking for a different option. So I think, in a way, it's 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 a dangerous ploy to be handing caps over <laughs> in, the, in the warm-ups, which is normally the yeah. traditional thing to do when yeah. uh, it can shift. If I could quickly just look at that KKR team one more time, 
one thing I think we missed out on. Yeah, there's no Nitish Rana there. Right, yeah, so there's no Nitish Rana and I can only assume it's an injury. He's not even named on the bench. So, not an option to come in. I don't know if there's any news coming through, but they're missing Nitish Rana, who's of course been a big player for them in the past, captain even last year. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, but Nitish Rana has had pretty, a pretty lean Quite. patch mm. for, for, for a bit and uh, Anukul Roy coming in is actually a really good option. He's a really okay. good batsman, very underrated. He hasn't been given enough opportunities from KKR over the last couple of seasons and this is good that he's getting a start early in the tournament. He can build on it, build some confidence and hopefully go on and play really well through the tournament. So, do you think he could slot in at four? He can, he can, he can bat anywhere. He's really, I mean, he obviously can't open or play number three, but anywhere from four onwards. Yeah, no. mm. Okay, well, if he is going to be a batter like Varunaran says, is likened to Rinku Singh's style or at least his role, Rinku Singh certainly made a case for himself to be one of the top finishers in the tournament, and we're going to see quite a few informed finishers. Dinesh Karthik still got it. Andre Russell's reminded us of the fine season he's had. So, this is where we talk about finishing in the game. And the exponents that we get to witness, we'll get to watch DK. I think that's a big surprise though between all due respect to DK. He's literally had no cricket. He's jumped in from the commentary box in the test series and had two significant innings. Just have a look at his numbers first up for uh, Dinesh Karthik. Just continues to get better and better. It's funny you make that point because at the, at the post-match interview, I actually asked him mm. that uh, DK, like you're you're commentating most of the time. How do you just come out and hit the ball so well? So, then uh, KP was like, in between commentary stints, he used to actually go have a hit, come back for another stint. Uh, on off days, he used to be at it. So, it's not like he's he's off the game completely. He's actually putting in a lot of prep and uh, he's uh, hitting the ground running. Mm. He's not paying a lot of attention to the game in between his commentary stints. Then. The one he's commentating <laughs> on. No, I think, to be fair, I think we're all a little bit surprised yeah. with his start because of his last season. His Correct, last yeah. season was pretty average. Pretty average. You know, and he just got over 100 runs. His strike rate was healthy, but he was the missing link in that RCB makeup. So for him to start the way he has, you know, you know had most of his career um, is a real bonus for RCB. Mm. And if you look at the other team, well, Andre Russell needs no real explanation or analysis, but it's nice to see the return of Andre Russell in some way. You shouldn't be surprised by it, though. Andre Russell's recent form, ever since he's cleared the paths to returning to play for the West Indies, down in Australia, striker of 231 in the three-match series there, he was just extraordinary. Just took Adam Zampa down, ILT 22, impressive, and a pretty decent BPL. He's clearly a happy and... Uh, a happy Andre Russell is what you need in the IPL, and he seems to have found his mojo back. Yeah, I think the mojo comes with he's got a goal, and the goal is the World Cup, and he believes the West Indies can win the World Cup, and Darren Sammy inviting him back into yes. that group. I think that was the point, right? Before ILT20, before that Aussie series, before BPL, um, that was the catalyst. He's, he's just come out and said he's got four abs. He's trying to get that six, those six. So he's obviously doing a lot of hard work, and and the striking we saw the other night was was old Andre Russell. And, and that's a really scary thought. You've got Rinku Singh, who I think is quality. Mm. He'd be, a, he'd be a, one of the first names I'd have on the, the sheet for the Indian World Cup squad. Um, and then you've got Andre Russell. I think that's a, a very, very destructive uh, finishing group. You think he might struggle at this venue, though? Just have a look at his numbers mm -hmm. at the Chinnaswamy. Andre Russell. Yeah, I, I, I doubt it. Yeah, I, I doubt it. The ground's not big enough. You know, it would surprise me to see one in the car park out of the ground. But um, yeah, look, I, I, you're, you're quite right. He is. He has got a focus. He is motivated. And I think the big thing with Andre Russell, I reckon, the last three years he's carried an injury, um, and therefore we haven't seen the best of him as the all-round package. He seems at the moment, touch wood, that he is injury-free. Yes. But, you know, because he gives you so much with the ball, he's an impact bowler with the ball. Yes, he can be expensive at yeah. time, but you're prepared to compromise that expense for the wickets he takes. In, in these last two years where perhaps we didn't see the best of him, we've also seen the growth of Rinku Singh. Any connection between, say, Rinku also evolving as a finisher to how Andre Russell might then be freed up, perhaps for KKR? Yeah, I mean, with crisis comes opportunity and, and Rinku really took advantage of Andy Russell's um, off off seasons, off yeah. seasons 
so yeah, I mean, Ringo Singh's done, done really well, and Mitch say, like Mitch said, uh, I mean, it's um, he's one of the definite contenders for for a spot mm. in the T Twenty World Cup. Uh, the this thing is, cool last year, just looking at his numbers, that's something else. Yeah, yeah. that's that's crazy. Average of almost sixty. That's mm. unbelievable. But the thing is. I mean, if you have to really sustain, you have to do it every year, year after year. Yeah. And this is going to be one of those years where he'll really want to, where, where the focus is on him. People know what he plays. Bowlers are going to have different plans. Yeah. And I would love to see how he combats uh, the whole attention bit now. This is the thing for an Indian player. He's now a capped player, but normally it's following up the big season. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Second year blues, they call it. <laughs> so, yeah, look, or purples. Um, yeah, look, he's, he's clearly a talent. There's no question there. Um, and not that I know him, but he comes across, just the interviews I've heard, yeah. he comes across very grounded. So if anyone's going to sort of make sure he avoids that sort of second year uh, blues, it'll be him. He's easily also just made the Indian team, that position in the Indian team, he's taken to it easily. So it's not like it's just been in the IPL. A number of us are very keen to see Rinku Singh uh, part of that T20 World Cup squad, but there's a long way away and the IPL, good IPL will have to come his way before that. The contest of last year, though, was Rinku Singh versus Yash Dayal. Five, sixes. Mm. That just took him to another level. I mean, he was mm. consistent throughout. But this made him mad, super, you know, viral and whatnot. Yeah. Made him cult. Yeah. Like, yeah. This was like, this is the most, this is going to be something we'll probably never see again. Now, who knows? Well. They come up against each other again. And maybe Dayal would have liked a good game under his belt before this dangerous matchup, not just Rinku. Oh, I Yash has started pretty well, to be fair. Yes. I think he started probably as well as you'd expect. He's he swung the ball at the top. He bowled three at the top the other night. Um, he didn't bowl. I know he went for 13 in his 18th over, but I thought his decision making under pressure at the death was pretty good. But when a batter's taken you down before, there's no way of clearing that out of your mind. Mm. No matter how mentally strong you are, and with it only being last year's IPL, uh, that's definitely Yash's and Jash's thoughts coming into this game. So. He'll know the first ball he bowls to him tonight, if he bowls to him, will we'll tell you how the rest of the over is going. If he executes that first ball, um, I expect it to be a, a good battle. If that first ball goes out of the park and he misses, then we could see a repeat of last year. Mm. Look, you, you don't want Yash Dayal bowling too much in the death, to be very honest. Yes. He's, not because he's not a good dead bowler, but I feel he, the, his utility, utility lies at, at the start. He, he's one of those really skillful left arm left arm fast bowlers who can bowl in and out. He doesn't push to he doesn't bowl that angle, but he actually bowls it out, which is which is really really which is really really good for a left arm fast bowler. And Rinku Singh and Yash Dayal are from the same are from the same domestic team, mm. so they've faced enough. He's bowled to him enough. He's batted to him enough. Uh, sometimes your friends are your biggest enemies, <laughs> <laughs> and that's been the case uh, in in the Rinku and Yash. Uh, there's become a lot of emotion in that line. Are there players in particular no, no, that no, 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 no. matched up nicely to you, good <laughs> friends of yours, good enemies of yours? No, no, I just kept my friends uh, it's, it's <laughs> outside true. Uh, Yeah, It's true though, because um, for years, um, well, when I went on the circuit and play against a guy like Colin Munro, who you worked with quite a bit, people would come and ask me, oh, where do you bowl to? And do you know what? I, I couldn't tell them because... Like, I would just sit there and admire him scoring runs yeah. all around the park, but I'd never actually thought about calculating the game plan to him. So, that could be part of it. Yeah. You know, you don't actually you sit there, you admire a player and say, geez, that's good, but you never actually think about how you're going to get them out. Correct. I think the other thing is when you come from the same team, you are quite relaxed in, in the batting position because you've seen, you know, the rhythm of the bowler, you've faced them in the yeah. nets plenty of times. So, there's yeah. nothing that you're not expecting so really you're, you're hiding to nothing where the bowler has to come out with something out of the box uh, so you know it's a lot more pressure on the bowler in that situation problem is if they're good friends they also understand each other they know when that fellow's probably getting worked up more under <laughs> pressure who can handle it better between the two we find out if we get to see Rinku Vidal because as the toss result is gone it will be in a chase and Deosh Dayal did bowl the 18th over in the last game so he might have a role to play here because Bangalore have Gone with the same balance of the combination. There's no Karan Sharma, so they are going to need the bowling in the 20 overs to come from the team that we did show you. But as we close the chat on the finishers, just a quick fun prediction. The finisher will have the biggest impact today. DK Rinku Russell. Varun? Russell. Russell. Ah. Rinku. Ooh, two Russells and a Rinku. Nice. And this is where we now will get Varun Arun ready for what's my favorite part of the show. 
Would you like to explain the impact zone to him in your own charming way, Tom, before I enter it? Well, we pick a batter, then a bowler, and then it's a free-for-all. You can go for an all-rounder or another batter or another bowler. This I and could have explained. I thought you'll give him expert opinions and advice and tips. No, 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 no. That's your, that's your job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just I'm giving him the layman's version. Oh, he's not giving you anything. He's, com he's competitive, this man. Yeah. Much like the coach that we'll see on his plate today. <laughs> right, uh, let's enter the impact zone. Yep, just confirmation of what Tom Moody was saying. You, our experts will pick three players, no repeats. So you have three players for yourself. And depending on how they fare as per ESPN Cricket for smart stats, where we see what their. Uh, total impact score is, they will then make our experts rank 1, 2, 3, and whoever wins, that's a nice little trophy, a virtual one, and three points in their season tally. Given it's Varun's first game. I was going to say, was that any different to how I explained it? No. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you can go first, <laughs> All right, given so it's your debut. I'm going to go Sunil Narayan for sure. Uh, no, no, you only land one at a time. So you're one. going your wild card first, no, no, or your no, no. bowler first? Bowler first, yeah. Bowler, bowler first, Narayan. Okay. So okay. Let's so pick bowlers, bowlers, bowlers then. Oof. Sunil Narayan first for Varun Aaron. <laughs> Mitch McLaren. Out of the blocks, isn't <laughs> he? <laughs> 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 yeah, Give me an easy job. Obviously, I'm going to pick Narayan. Okay, he's gone Narayan. Okay, I'm going to go Mitchell Stark. Okay. You want to see the teams? I'm going to know. I'm going to go for Dal. Yes, Dale. Yes, Dale. Okay, I am going to back his comeback into wow. this contest. Okay, I'm quite intrigued that at the Chinnaswamy we've started with bowlers. Okay, that's mm. nice. Let's move to batters. Mitch McLanagan, would you like to go first? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. I'll go Andre Russell. Okay, I'll go Virat Kohli. All right. Jim Stark is going to get him first ball. I'll go Rinku Singh. Okay, so we got a Dale and a Rinku Ooh. picked. Now it's a free for all. Bowlers and batters done. You've covered a few all rounders in that. Tom Moody? I'm going to go for Green. Cameron Green, okay. Barun? I'm going to go Anukul Roy because he's my boy. Ah, oh, I can see some love for Anukul Roy. Oh, I've starry. gone for that before and it hasn't worked. <laughs> <laughs> my bowler went for 66. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Yeah. Mopaka. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I was, wanted you to see it the other day. Okay, my, I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. All right. Uh, we will be going for... I'll get to watch the ball and see if Faf goes well. No, I'm going to go Glenn <laughs> Maxwell. Okay. Sure fire after two. two All nothings. right. We have quite an assortment of players covered. Let's get a quick first inning score prediction and your outrageous prediction. Tom, why don't you lead the way in show, Baron? Okay, I, I think the score is going to be 181. An outrageous prediction is that uh, Stark is going to go for over 50. Ooh, Ooh, four, right? No, let me say 45. Okay, 50 is a bit than, generous. More than 45. That's good enough, Mitch Stark. All right, Mitch McLanagan. Uh, RCB will get 210. Ooh, big score. Glenn Maxwell, 80. Ooh. Virat Kohli out third ball. <laughs> we can wait to see if that comes true. Maron Aaron. RCB going to get anywhere between 190 to 200. And Come on, go nail it down. It's going to be we, super we, we need biased. a number. Yeah. You can't go okay. between. 195. 195. That's between Perfect. 192 to 200. 195. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and the outrageous prediction. Anukul Roy is getting a 50. Ah, <laughs> there's a lot of love there. There's isn't a lot of love. Your, no, he's your neighbor. I think he's your neighbor. He's taking a little bit too far. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. This was fun. I was going to wait to see if we get three balls in, but it takes so long that, you know, I'll let Mr. McClanagan's outrageous prediction just play out organically. Thank you very much. A uh, wonderful debut for Varun Aaron. He'll be with us right through the day, as will Tom Moody and Mr. McClanagan. So we pick up the conversation at the end of the RCB evenings on Malti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Drinking for Timeout. Download the mobile app. If you haven't already, there's a lot that's uh, being said, written, covered around the IPL and the world of cricket. And you'll get the fastest scores there as well uh, on the ESPN Drink Info app. We'll see you at the end of the evening. All new hot and techy breath up, the city bird SUV.